Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 16th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Diary from Xavier today about yet another malicious document. The initial infection vector isn't really all that special. Interesting name of the document. The title is Saudi Declare War on Lebanon. The document itself is well recognized by antivirus by now. But uh, what's sort of interesting is what the script does later. It does actually make Word more vulnerable by enabling macros by default, disabling the safe loading or protected view in Word. So this way, if you then receive additional documents, you will be infected without having to approve macros. So once the user recognizes that they are infected and if they make the common mistake of just removing the malicious document and whatever malware they can find, they will still be open for a follow-on infection due to these weakened vert settings. I think the main lesson here is that if you find an infected system, rebuild it from scratch. Cleaning the malicious software usually isn't sufficient in order to protect the system going forward. Now, you may remember back in September, Armis a security consulting company did publish a video and a paper about the Blueborn attack. The Blueborn attack was really a set of vulnerabilities in common Bluetooth stacks that in essence do allow remote code execution on devices via Bluetooth. Now at the time, Linux kernels, uh, for example, Android did release patches, but uh, Two particular devices were sort of overlooked at the time, and that was Amazon's Echo as well as the Google Home device. There are a few million of them out there. They have now been patched. Nothing you have to do as a user as these devices will patch automatically. And it used to be good advice to only download Android applications from Google's Play Store. And malicious applications happened occasionally in the Google Play Store. But, uh, well, if it happened, it usually made big news. Apparently, uh, this is sort of changing. There are a couple of different reports that uh, different antivirus vendors have released showing that uh, there are currently multiple waves of malicious applications that are hitting the Google Play Store. Among those, the one that I think is the most significant one is one that McAfee is talking about. They found 144 different applications that were infected with what they're calling Krabos. Now, the purpose of Krabos is not so much to do malicious things itself, but to trick the user into installing additional malicious applications via fake system pop-up messages. The second report here comes from Malwarebytes. They call an Operation Asia Hit Group that targets specifically Asian users. Now, it uses an IP blacklist in order to limit its spread to Asian countries. And it did come in the form of infected QR scanners and QR generators. Many of these applications have been downloaded millions of times. Of course, Google was notified by these companies about these applications, but this of course was after the fact. And I guess it's safe to assume that at this point, you don't have to worry about the applications listed in these reports, but about the next wave of malicious applications, which is probably already on its way. So you really have to uh, be a little bit more careful with the Google Play Store and Google needs to find better ways to screen its applications. So far, Apple, I guess, has been lucky with its App Store, but uh, typically Apple's vetting tends to be more strict than the Google Play Store vetting. 
Now, of course, what's worse than apps that you download from the Google Play Store are apps that are already installed on your new phone. OnePlus, a company that made a name for itself with higher end, not carrier linked Android phones, was found to deliver a couple of debug applications with its handsets that are logging extensive statistics about usage patterns, SMS and the like, and apparently are making them available. Now, on the good side, the attacker needs to have physical access to the phone to enable this debugging application. You have to dial a specific code in order to bring up the user interface and then enable specific logs. The logs are saved to an SD card, which of course then could be removed and taken away from the device. A second application found by the same individual earlier is probably a little bit more suspicious. It does collect telemetry from users without actually properly anonymizing the data. So uh, this data is then being sent back to OnePlus, which would be able to track individual users. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.